Today we're going to talk about the absolute impossibility of you trying to get saved by the Sermon on the Mount. I want you to imagine for a minute, there you are, you're seeking to know who God is, and for the first time ever, you meet Jesus, and you hear the Sermon on the Mount, and the Sermon on the Mount is now your prescription of how to get saved, of what to do. As a matter of fact, I want to read a verse from you at the end of this chapter 5. He goes on to say, that do these things, so he just listed off a whole bunch of things that we need to be doing to be made right with God. By the way, when I say we, I want to be clear, I'm not referring to Christians. I'm referring to unsaved people trying to get right with God by law. But regardless, we'll get to that in a minute. He says this, do these things that you may be children of your Father in heaven. You see, all too often, we're Christians are preaching Sermon on the Mount sermons to other believers as, hey, this is the goal. The goal is, is behaviorism as identified on the Sermon on the Mount. But I want you to imagine, we're going to go through a couple of these verses here, because I want you to imagine you're seeking God and you hear this sermon for the first time. And I wonder, would you say, cool, I can be a believer. I can, I, I can get saved um, and this is the standard of how I'm going to do it. And I, I think if you would try to put yourself in the shoes of the audience, you might realize, ooh, who can do this? But, uh, you know, Matthew 5 starts out with these, uh, we call them the Beatitudes, right? And I think at this time, the initial opening, Jesus is sort of giving us a prescription of who really can be saved before he takes a, a hard U-turn. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor in spirit, I think, are people who just really are broken and say, I can't do it. I can't save myself. I, I, I can never be righteous through my own human performance. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. I mean, meek. I'm not proud. Proud people think they can get right with God through outward performance. Meek people realize, I can't do it. I am nothing without Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, uh, thirst for righteousness. These are people who are thirsty for it, but they can't. Why are you thirsting? Because you realize you can't get there on your own. You wouldn't be thirsty for it if you could do it yourself. Um, blessed are, and, and, and this, these Beatitudes, they go on then to say, these, uh, blessed be the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So we've got this part right here. And I want you to notice, all of a sudden, um, at about verse 17, as Jesus has given this sermon, he takes this like complete wild 180, it that's not even, doesn't sound anything like the Beatitudes. He says, do not think that I have come here to abolish the law. In other words, get ready, because I'm getting ready to hit you with a right hook, Jewish people who are seeking the law for salvation. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So I'm going to sort of skim through. I've got some um, uh, verses up here in front of me, uh, so I'm going to sort of navigate through them. I just want to like touch on certain points. Jesus is now going to start giving a prescription in his Sermon on the Mount, and I want you to realize, who would you want to teach this sermon to? Should this sermon be to believers? By the way, how do we get saved? Um, before we read these, how do we get saved? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We are saved by hearing and believing with faith. I want you to notice what we're not going to hear in here. What we're going to hear in here is 100% salvation by works. It's 100% salvation by human effort, by outward performance. Jesus makes no mention of faith, salvation, apart from works of the law. He literally is saying no. In this case, salvation apart from faith, but only through works of the law. You know, he starts out in verse uh, around 21, he starts talking about, hey, you heard it said don't murder. I'm telling you, if you've even been angry, Guilty, you get hell. How many of us have passed that? You sh we scroll a little forward, he starts talking about adultery. You heard, 
Oh, Jewish people you heard do not commit adultery. But I'm telling you, if you looked with lust, guilty, you get hell. Don't get divorced. A lot of people have already been divorced. He goes on to talk about oaths. And essentially he says this. Again, you've heard uh, it said from long ago, do not break your oath. But uh, fulfill to the Lord the vow you've made. But I'm telling you, don't even swear an oath at all. I mean, have you ever sworn? I swear to God, uh, I promised on the Bible, uh, I promise you, which is an oath. If you've made a promise, you've sworn, a, you've sworn an oath. Have you ever looked with lust? Have you ever been angry with a brother? Eye for an eye. Again, this is the sermon that is teaching people how to be made right with God, right? Flip turn from the Beatitudes. He says, I tell you in verse 39, do not resist an evil person. Evil person comes up to you, wants to snatch your purse or snatch your wallet. Don't, don't resist him. Hey, if he smacks you on the cheek, you give him the other cheek. Don't get mad. Don't protect yourself. You need to turn your cheek and let him smack the other one. Hey, if that guy wants to sue you and take your shirt, Jesus said, hand over your coat as well. Don't just give them the shirt. You need to give them your coat too. You ever listen to these words here and ask yourself, why would you, why, is this how we get saved? He goes on to say, if anyone forces you to go a mile, go too. Give anyone who asks you, anyone who asks you for something, right? So someone says, hey, I want to borrow $5,000. I want to borrow everything in your bank. Um, give to anyone who asks you, this is verse 42 out of chapter 5, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Now, I want you to imagine this. Have you ever said no to someone who wanted to borrow from you? Because what you're being called to do here is to give to everyone who borrows from you. You wouldn't have a dollar left in your pocket right now if you actually honored that because people will be taking advantage of Christians so bad we wouldn't know what hit us. Love your enemies right? Love your enemies for the people who, you know, stole from you, maybe have violated or abused your family in some deep, hurtful way. Love them. Look, I'm not saying don't love people, but how are you doing with that? If this is how you get made right with God, how are you doing loving the people who violently offended you or someone you love? Pray for those who persecute you. And then he goes on to say that you may be children of your father in heaven. So I'm asking you, I only picked out a few pieces from chapter five. If this is how we get saved by God, again, this is how we become children of our father in heaven is letting people take from us, turning our cheek when they smack us. Uh, if we look with lust, cut out our eye, the Bible told us. If our hand causes us to stumble, cut it off because we're better to go there without that body part than be in hell. If Jesus is trying to give a, a motivational speech to Christians, and this is how we get saved, we are in a world of trouble. And what I'm saying is this, it's high time we start preaching Sermon on the Mount messages to Christians. This is a message that shows somebody who's trying to get made right with God through their own human effort. And Jesus is simply saying, okay, if that's, if that's your plan, I'm going to go ahead and let you have it. I'm going to show you how to get right with God through an old covenant, through the old covenant that was by human performance. Every ounce of the Sermon on the Mount is about you using external outward human performance to get made right with God. Not one mention of faith, not one mention of you hearing and believing with faith to be made right with God. I'm not sure how we miss it, guys, but I got to be honest with you, it is a big, big deal. And it's high time we start recognizing what Jesus' real motive was and who his audience was on the Sermon on the Mount. Hope that helped. God bless you guys.